going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And now we're having the truth come out because, guys, we know we're getting close. We have Mike Novogratz asked with the Fed's loose policy, has it helped crypto? Guys, we know this. We know the Fed pumps stocks and cryptos, but it's time to take it back. Also, Mike Novogratz spoke about China, and man, did he tell the truth. China owns most of our debt, but they're trying to get rid of it. We have Russia already then got rid of it. The dollar is gone, guys. The only thing that's saving the dollar just a little bit is because we're going to be going over to digital currencies. China's Belt and Road is going to be so powerful, guys. You're talking about the rise of China the dragon and the fall of America to Babylon. And it was all done internally, all planned out. This is the last supper of freedom, guys. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Because when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. Y'all have a wonderful day. Joining us now for an exclusive interview is Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novogratz. Uh, Mike, very good afternoon to you. Good to see you. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're pretty well, thank you. We're pretty well, and it's good to see you. I, my, my question, not so much about uh, w what the implications of tapering are towards uh, crypto, but, but a broader question stepping back. To what extent has the super loose policy uh, from central banks around the world over recent years allowed crypto to grow to be as big as it has been? Yeah, listen, I think it's a wildly important part of the story. People look at, you know, uh, budget deficits. They look at the behavior of central banks and Ministry of Finances or the Treasury Departments and say, we're running up deficits we can't pay back. And this is kind of past the point of no return. So how do I hedge myself against either a slow or fast debasement of fiat currency? You know, Bitcoin was tailor-made for this. And so that gave it a tailwind. And now we've kind of hit escape velocity where the adoption cycle is so strong, more and more people coming into the space every week, that crypto's going up where other risk assets or other inflation hedges might not be. If you look at gold versus crypto, there's been a huge dislocation. So do you fear tapering and, and rates going up as, as something that would derail crypto or not really anymore? Listen, I think if, if we really see uh, the Fed move on rates, the economy is that strong that they feel confident enough to move rates and, and, and taper in a big way, it won't be good for crypto. I don't think it collapses crypto because of this adoption cycle. People are buying in to Ethereum and Solana and Luna for other reasons than just the debates in the fiat currency. It probably hurts Bitcoin worse than the rest of crypto. Um, but I still think we're so early in this movement, in this ecosystem, that crypto can do okay. It does, on a related note, Mike, raise the question as to why the dollar hasn't strengthened more. I, I know you traded currencies for a long time. Dollar's down over the last 12 months by half a percent. If the U.S. is, is truly, and it is, the strongest growth area right now, we, we were the first to get high vaccinations. It looks like we're the first to taper and, and potentially talk about higher rates and inflation. All of that should mean the dollar's going up against others, shouldn't it? You know, we have this giant deficit. Um, 
that we're going to have to fund. Right? We've been the reserve currency of the world, and that status is being eaten away at. You look at what happened in Afghanistan today and just the, the Twitter conversation around it. How, what the rest of the world thinks about American leadership isn't great. And so you have places like China that specifically wants to hold less U.S. treasuries. Russia that's holding no U.S. treasuries, right? And so this idea of dollar dominance is going to be under attack for a long time. Uh, on the margin, us tapering, us raising rates will certainly help the dollar. But within the big geopolitical uh, context, I'm not sure there's, you know, that's not going to be over, uh, outweighed. Mike, I, mean, I know you're a big believer across across the crypto spectrum. I, I, I was just wondering if, if you kind of bought into the sentiment that I feel is quite widely out there in, in recent weeks and months, that, that Bitcoin has slightly, in a relative sense, lost its attraction relative to, to some other cryptos, like Ethereum in particular. Are you, are you in that mindset as well? You know, I, listen, I think they serve different purposes. Bitcoin's lane is really just store of value. It's digital gold. And the people we see buying it are buying it as a hedge versus the debasement of fiat currency. Ethereum and Solana and Luna and all the other level one solutions, people are really investing as a venture bet on what the future of finance can be. I mean, Ethereum could be the culture, the currency of culture, right? NFTs could mostly be built on the Ethereum content, uh, platform. Uh, and so that excitement of DeFi plus NFTs being built on Ethereum is with thriving money to that space. So real different reasons. I think they're cousins, they'll coexist. There'll be correlation because they're crypto, but they don't serve the same purpose. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33, Part 3. King Yashua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.